Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Passover and what it is we are supposed to do on Passover, the first of the holy feasts of the year. Now we've been putting out several classes on Passover, the rules of Passover, the timing of Passover, the oblations of Passover, even how Passover can prevent you from getting these plagues that are taking over the world. Now those are the scriptures words not mine. See Jubilees chapter 49 verse 15. But in this class we want to look at what the third testament has to say about the Passover. Now if you want to you can look down in the description and find links to this third testament of the Bible both a PDF version that you can download to your computer or an audio book that you can listen to over on YouTube. But we're going to jump down to chapter 11 of the Third Testament of the Bible. So let's start right here in verse 99 of chapter 11. It says, When Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples, according to the tradition of that people, he told them, Something new I will reveal unto you. Drink this wine and eat this bread, which represent my blood and my body, and do this in memory of me. Now we can hear this story in many of the Gospels found in the New Testament. The one we're looking at here is in Mark. Mark chapter 14 talks about the Last Supper. Now looking in the Third Testament, it says, When Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples according to the tradition of the people. In the New Testament, we can see what he means. In verse 12 of chapter 14, sin as how the disciples had killed the Passover lamb. It says, and the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said unto him, where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? But let's go on. Now you see right here in the third testament verse 99 says he told them something new I will reveal unto you drink this wine and eat this bread. Now in the book of Mark we find that down here in verse 22 which says and they did eat Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said take eat this is my body. Now understand that the Messiah was the word made flesh he was actually the living word of God the word incarnated into a human being so what he's referring to here when he says this is my body he's talking about the word of God this bread that he's talking about is a representation of the word of God so although many people myself included will be partaking in material bread made of flour on the night of Passover we understand that to be symbolic as we're digging deeper into the spiritual meaning of what's going on and that is the partaking of his holy word consuming the bread symbolizes consuming the word of God verse 23 says and he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he said unto them this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many now again we have to look for the spiritual meanings behind this we will be consuming wine because we were commanded to do so in these scriptures but understanding the spiritual meaning of what's actually being consumed is the blood of the New Testament now what does that mean? Why does the wine symbolize blood? This is how we get the forgiveness of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. But we also understand that the Messiah shed his blood for the remission of our sins. So the drinking of this wine symbolizes the blood of the Messiah being put on the doorposts of our heart. Now notice over here in the book of Mark, chapter 26 and verse 28 is making a connection between this wine 
and the remission of sins. Verse 27 says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. You ever hear that we have a clean slate? It is through the act of drinking the Passover wine that we get this clean slate every year. The same way in the Old Testament where they took blood and sprinkled it here and there about the sanctuary. It is the wine of the Passover feast that cleanses our fleshly tabernacle. This is why knowledge of his word is so important. Assuming that we have a clean slate just because we believe in his name, just because we believe will give us a false hope. No, we actually have to do what the scripture says. But let's go on. See right here where it says, and do this in memory of me. The Passover feast comes once a year. We're being told to partake in this sacrament every year. Verse 100 says, After the parting of the Master, the disciples commemorated the sacrifice of the Lord, drinking wine and eating the bread that symbolized He who gave all for love and humanity. Now, if you look at our channel, you can find a playlist on church history. It's a 13 hour lecture that goes in great detail as to what happened after the New Testament stops. After all of the apostles were dead and gone, what happened years, decades, centuries, and even millennia later? And one thing we could find is how the disciples created a new church based on the Messiah's doctrine that lasted for hundreds of years, approximately 300 years until it was all but destroyed by the Romans and a guy named Constantine in about 312 AD. So that's what it's talking about here when he says that after the parting of the Messiah, the disciples commemorated the sacrifice of the Lord drinking wine and eating the bread. They were doing this as a group up until the time of Constantine and the Romans came in and changed everything. For the majority of them, he took away Passover and gave them Easter. But we'll save that for another class. Verse 101 says, As the centuries passed, the people divided in religions and gave different interpretations to my words. Now this is always the case. This communion feast that was supposed to be in the privacy of one's own home Referencing Exodus chapter 12 and verse 3, which says a lamb for a house. Verse 3 says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. So the Passover celebration would have been per each individual household. And that's why you saw the Messiah's disciples kill a Passover lamb for their own consumption. But over time, this became a religious act as the priests and the church leaders of the time made this into a religious affair with much pomp and grandeur, thereby giving different interpretations to the word. It wasn't about cleansing of the fleshly tabernacle as much as it was a religious rite. Verse 102 says, Today I come to tell you that which was my feeling at that hour, at that supper, where every word and act of Jesus was a lesson from a book of profound wisdom and infinite love. If I took the bread and wine, it was to make you understand that they were like the love that is the sustenance of life and of the spirit. And if I told you, do this in memory of me, the master wished to tell you to love your brothers 
with a love like that of Jesus, giving yourselves as the true sustenance of humanity. This was always supposed to be an individual act, not a religious ceremony, but an act centered around the family and or the individual. By turning it into a religious rite, they changed it to something else all totally together. Look at 103. He says, any right that you make of these teachings will be sterile if in your lives you do not carry out the practice of my teachings and examples. And that is the difficulty for you, but in that is where merit lies. See, anybody can go down to the church and have a communion feast, drink a sip of wine, and eat a piece of cracker. But what good does it do if it's merely a right? We have to understand what it is that we're doing in that moment. We're doing this in memory of the Messiah who taught us love for our brothers. If we are partaking in the Passover feast with a lack of love in our heart, we are sterilizing the act, making it questionable whether our slate is actually cleansed or not. Now, notice right here where he says that we have to carry out the practice of his teachings and examples. And then it says, in that is the difficulty for you. See, we have to become like the Messiah. He was our example. We have to remember how he lives in great detail from the information that we get in the Gospels. How he was humble. How he was faithful how he endured ridicule and slander, how he even endured pain and suffered death. That's what it means to bear the cross. And that's why it says it is difficult for you. But then it says, but in that is where merit lies because it is in bearing that cup that we gain the merits necessary for us to cleanse the stains from our heart because our sins although they are forgiven are not forgotten and we have to make up for them let me make up an example as a little bit of an illustration if one person we'll call Bobby has stolen Jack's bicycle and both of them stand before the judge Bobby with the bicycle and Jack who is crying if Bobby has a repentant heart and confesses his sins and says yes I have stolen my brother's bicycle he may not be punished severely for taking the bicycle but doesn't he have to give the bicycle back in other words he can be forgiven of his theft because of his confession but he still has to make up for it he still has to give the bike back now the rest of this section on the last supper goes into details on some of the events that happened during the last supper but we wanted this class to be about what it is that we're actually supposed to do on the night of Passover so to sum it all up what it boils down to is the partaking of wine and unleavened bread in remembrance of the Messiah understanding that those are symbols for a much greater act that is going on spiritually through the bread we are symbolizing consuming his word and his doctrine and the examples that he put before us on how we should live our lives and with the wine is symbolizing the cleansing away of our sins and the sanctification of our tabernacles. This video was being recorded in 2020, March of 2020, when a pandemic is taking over the world. 
Now there are many people who have no faith in the word who want to act like this plague is random and that anybody could suffer from it. But those of us that know the scripture know that nothing is random and sin is the cause of all bad things that happen to us. The cleansing away of those sins with this spiritual wine can and will protect us from the pandemics taking over the world. So I just wanted to show you what the Third Testament has to say and we will be putting out other classes on what we should be doing on Passover night. Like for instance how we should be taking the leavening out of our house during that 24 hour period and how we should be preparing for the Feast of Unleavened Bread that starts the following evening, the evening of the 15th and first fruits. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button as you can see those classes when they come out. Hit the like button if you got something out of it. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. But leave a comment either way. And Shalom.